I've been building this modular synth for about five years and it's always a work in progress but I figured it would be a fine time to do a little update video on what's going on and how many knobs have fallen off. Let's start here. This is all the drums. This is the Beatstep Pro that is sequencing this. It's getting MIDI output into this thing, which is a MIDI to gate sequencer. It's got 16 outputs that send out gates. Woo! So we've got the first one, which is the kick. And this is going to the kick, as well as going into the sidechain module, which is up here, that brings down the bass and stuff, you know, whenever the kick happens, and also the snare. The kick is based on a 909. Just a dodgy bit of strip board. But yeah, yeah. It's quite nice. And I've also added a resonant band pass that's actually a double band pass. So I've got two bands that I can pass through. So if I turn that on. So you can use that as transition. So you can build it up and it's like... And then the big drum comes in. Over to the snare. This is just a mutant snare drum, which is like a made by Hex Inverter, mutant snares. So um, what this does is it just makes a snare noise. pretty cool for messing around and adding different lengths of snares and tones you know it's all fun and games next to it we've got a clap module that's um, also the mutant claps by hex inverter it's just behind a fancy panel I made this as the DIY because it used to be a PCB project that you could just purchase the PCBs and put together yourself and it's not on. press play and like For the clap. Pretty snazzy. It kind of adds a, like a bit of an extra noise and build up. So that's that part. And then we go to the hi hat, which is actually first going through this trigger multiplier. So I can at some points double it up. And this is also a mutant hex inverter project. I bought all of these PCB boards at the same time and then just built them behind panels. And I can open it up for riding along more, so if I'm going like this. So I've got the hi-hat going. Easy! I've also got, I've actually got two hi-hats going on there. Oh, it's the Lindrum over there. So that's the hi-hat. Then we go over to this one, which is actually the mutant kick drum, but I use it more for like um, a tom, a mutant kick tom. It's just a nice little soul. Tom, and then like you like, but that's all that does, and that's next to the kick, which is over here as well. But then we go over to this bad boy, which is the mega percussive synth, and what that does is it just um, makes funky noises that go on the top. It's a pretty uh, versatile uh, drum that you can make sound like loads of different things from kick drums up to like big bouncing resonant sounds. It's pretty funky. All of these noises as well as the ones that are coming from the wav trigger up there. They're just samples that are coming from up here. We'll look at that later. But these are all going into this um, mixer, which is a eight input mixer free output mixer and why it's free output is so I can send the different sounds to different things. So the first line is the first mixing desk and that goes into this freezing module which actually makes me able to freeze it. Which is fun for like scanning up the uh, it's fun for, for like funking up the drum beat like Got it. It's cool for like adding transitions and parts to the song. The next trigger, the next one up is actually the reverb. So you can send it into the reverb, but you can also send the reverb into itself to add feedback. It's pretty funky and that's a spring reverb in the back. I think if I hit it, I could probably... So that was the 
drums. Now we're going to follow this single MIDI cable up to this next case, which is actually the bass synth and a tiny little bit of a melody synth that goes on top. So the bass synth takes up most of this space. The first part of the bass synth, i.e. the biggest part, are these three oscillators right here, which has got like an um, octave. And then this goes through with some pulse width and all of that, and they're all mixed together and going into this MS-20 style low pass filter, which is very oversized because it's quite a large performance point. <laughs> And then that goes into one distortion, and then that distortion goes into another distortion. This next distortion acts like a kind of effects pedal, so when you get to a big part of a song, you put it on. So you're like building up, you're building up, you're building up, you're building up and down. And then that's lovely, but then there's another level on top, so that's one volume boost. But then there goes into a ring modulator after that, which boosts the volume even more. And then there's another one as well. So it proper gets to a rang, so it proper mangles the sound. And these are like, these are switched. The thinking is, like, if you're a guitar player, you're hitting on effects pedals in an effects pedal chain. So it seems to make sense to do that in a modular synth scenario. So that's the first part of the synth bass. But then we bring in the bit that goes on top. Which is this part up here, which is three more oscillators going into another set of filters. This is mainly just to kind of like pad out the bass line more. So I flick this button and it adds a sub to the bottom of everything. sound so you're able to add different kind of textures to it seems for me the bass is the biggest part of the sound the bass line it's got lots of different parts then we go over to this other little bit up here which is just a secondary melody synthesizer Ooh. which is just the braids again which is a digital oscillator going into another filter I think this is based on a Moog ladder filter and then it's actually going into a delay as well Ooh. and then this one's like And you like bring it all back in. It's adding another line of melody on the top. This cabinet up at the top 
is the top of the touring synth and this has got the uh, MIDI sequencer that actually plays the songs that I play live at live gigs as well as some samples in a WAV trigger sampler and then we go over to a mixer that isn't patched in right now but that's usually patched into this one over there which is quite a chaotic sounding one I'll turn that up And I kind of use that for transitions when I'm playing live. And then next to that, right in the middle, is my trusty Cosmo, who sadly has just broken just before I was doing this video, but he's usually dancing around to the music. So that's all that's up there. And these three boxes are usually what I mainly take to gigs. Over here is another part that I don't actually take anywhere, usually just stays put. This is for stuff that I sort of use, but I don't use as much as this, as well as new things that I'm trying out. For instance, down here, I'm trying this thing out. I just built it. It's a Ginkgo Synthes sample slicer that is between, behind a Cosmo panel. I really like it, and I've only had it for a couple of days. And basically, I've just, I've just recorded some Furby into it. <laughs> to do some distortion as well so it's sounding pretty mangly but I like that it's probably going to end up in the touring modular as well at some point. Up above we've actually got a module that I hardly use it was for the lightsaber things the lightsaber pheromones they're somewhere but one day they'll come out again and be used but that's a pretty funky interface for when I need to use that. Next to that there's another Benjolin. Oh. Up above, we've got this um, solar freaking roadways, which is actually pretty fun to use. I'm gonna get my uh, phone, I'm gonna quickly patch it in. Woo! So when you're playing it live, you can play this live. I like getting people to come up and play with their phones. It's quite an easy thing to pick up if I just plug this into this. But that's pretty cool if you've got your phone and you want to be a little bit expressive, then try that. I'm just going to turn the torch off. How did it turn off? Ah, there we go, lovely. There's some envelope generators up here that I use to make some chaotic sequences that's currently plugged into the bass drum. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of it for nothing, but that's usually plugged in to modulate lots of different parts. Up above, there's some sequences and some VCAs and another drum module. Like I said, these are actually parts that are multiplications of the things in here, so I don't usually tend to take them on tour, but they're just good to have around if you know what I'm saying. So over here we've got the uh, Mega Drone that isn't plugged in right now, but I usually plug that into some distortion and add a, you know, use it to do some sort of THX sounds. Up here, there's modules that I don't really use that much anymore. There's even the Flamethrower module, which um, I'm sure you understand why I don't use. I like my eyebrows. <laughs> but Sam, why have you got so many Beat Step Pros? Well, let me tell you. The reason why I have so many is because they're pretty cheap and you know, it's an easy way of having everything in front of you so you can see what's going on. Like, I'm not using all of the sequences here. I'm using most of them, but you know, it's mainly just so I can hit different things at different times instead of having to scroll through different menus. Over here, we've actually got like, uh, this one's running the Lindrum. Like if it... And then the, the Lindrum. Yeah, 
there. And then, and then this one has actually got a polyphonic sequence in it. I'm using the drum sequencer as a polyphonic sequencer to sequence the Juno over there. So if I'm like, I'm just gonna quickly like record something in. That makes sense. And then there's um, other things being sequenced by here, but like this MS-10 down here. Oh, no. Ooh, that sounds Only a few things on different sequences, so they're all nice and out there. It's also you can have bigger expressions with your movements and hands instead of like just like little little twiddlies. You like this big movements. So over here we have the keyboard setup. This isn't sequenced at all. It's just for playing melodies, you know. <laughs> You heard this Juno earlier, this was being sequenced but I can also play it at the same time in case I want to play it a little bit more expressionately, you know like... But also as playing it, you saw before that I can sequence it as well. I can't remember what the sequence was but we'll play it. This is like most of the setup that I play with. You put this all together and I think it makes a pretty cohesive setup for playing live streams and for playing live. So that's my setup as it is now. I use it for like recording and writing songs. You're gonna hear in a couple of months some of those. I use that to go and play live and I use this whole setup to play on my live streams, my monthly live streams on Patreon. So if you're interested to see how this is, like playing completely live, uncut, then go and check it out on the Patreon. Uh, I'll be shooting lots more videos and performances. I'll be doing some covers up in the next few months. And yeah, I hope that was of interest. I've been letting mum know computer, keep making synthesizers and all that stuff and don't be scared to try it.